everybody who has had congenital heart surgery as a child should be followed on an annual basis by their cardiology team to detect if there are any changes in their heart over time. If there are important changes in the heart that develop over time, it may be important to see a surgeon if the heart defect is starting to become symptomatic. A lot of times before we actually meet the patient in pre-op, meeting the surgeon, meeting the patient, we spent already hours and hours looking at your studies and results from the echoes and MRIs and catheterizations and any variety of procedures and studies that you may have already had done. We often discuss your case in advance in a specialized conference attended by cardiologists, electrophysiologists, surgeons, as well as anesthesiologists and ICU doctors, where we really go into the nitty gritty of what the options are and what the best option is for you as a unique patient presenting with a really unique problem. And so it's always fun to then finally meet the folks face to face when you come in because it's almost like we're old friends, but we haven't actually met each other yet. So we get to know a little bit more of your story and then really go through with diagrams and analogies. We try to explain as best we can why you need surgery and then also what all we're gonna do in the operating room and what we can expect from the recovery. And in particular, we really try to have a detailed conversation about the risks because there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There are risks related to everything that we do in medicine, in particular in heart surgery, in particular in congenital heart surgery, and especially in adult congenital heart surgery. In addition to that lengthy and nuanced discussion, you'll have your chest x-ray, EKG, blood work, and we review all that to make sure that we are all on solid ground and have consensus about what the plan should be to optimize our ability to get you through an operation safely. We really think hard and long about exactly what the situation is with each patient to determine what the goals are. It's simple to say we want you to have no symptoms and we want you to live as long as possible, and that's always the case for, for anyone. But if we consider that there's sometimes a trade-off between those two goals, and also a trade-off between safety and effectiveness of any given intervention, we often have to make tough decisions about exactly what we're willing to accept in terms of risk and what we're willing to accept in terms of durability and the chance of success of any operation that we enter into. And so with the overall goal being to prolong life and to provide as optimal symptomatic relief as possible, we also consider heavily what the impact will be on future long-term complications of anything that we do. And although we don't have a crystal ball, we do have increasing experience about what we can expect to happen, not just a month or a year down the line, but decades down the line, and what you might need in terms of repeat procedures, either in the cath lab or the operating room. We do our best to make sure that what we do in the OR today keeps the bridges open for therapies you might need in the future. And so it's not just about providing immediate benefit, but also about making sure that we provide a long-term benefit and that we anticipate future problems that may arise so that we keep those avenues open for being able to treat you again in the future. <laughs>